Hey everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. Today is a day of frustration and learning and more frustration. Well, guys, I'm installing a temperature controller, a generic temperature controller, into a water bath, really. And um, the problem is, is the coding instructions are so complex. And this is an American-made product. Uh, well, actually, I think the controller is made in Spain. However, these instructions were written by people in Indiana. Is that the problem? Given I was growing up in Michigan, yeah, Indiana is the problem. <laughs> anyway, guys, let's go ahead and take a look and see what I got. What a frustration this is. I'll show you what steps I've taken and where I'm at. This is it. This is the Performa. This little controller right here took me forever ever to get in it took me about five or six months that's the TSWB now there are various models there are some for heating there are some for cooling and this one here can be set from degrees Fahrenheit standard to centigrade but right now it's in Fahrenheit because that as you can see on the instruction label that is what they're looking for it's currently heating and you can see the little flashy flash over there in the corner that shows that hey something is happening it took me easily an hour to get to this point. The instructions are absolutely ridiculous. You can see that there's a high set point, there's a low set point, which is all that you normally see from the first menu. However, you have to go into a special menu, which you hold the set button right here. You hold this guy for like eight seconds, and then it allows you to get into this extra menu of all this stuff down here. Let's go ahead and show you how I got to this point. I guess we should start out by discussing the wiring. So you can see I have one jumper right there on the power supply that goes over to terminal nine. Really weird, I took a photo of the original old unit that shorted, I did a video on that. It actually um, caught fire on a live stream and that is how it was wired, oddly enough. So it disconnects at nine and I believe at terminal five, so nine and five are both disconnected. Really weird. You would think that it would be connected to terminal eight and then terminal five or nine would be switched, but it switches both ends of the connection. It's really weird. So you can see right there that it's jumpered right here to terminal nine. And based on this circuit description, 9 is normally closed, and terminal 5 is normally closed, Sitch 6 is normally open, you would think that 6 would be engaging. Um, anyway, I'm just hooking it up exactly how the OEM had it, and you can see over here terminal 5 is going to be disconnected. So when you plug it in, it starts out immediately in the heating cycle, which I guess is how it should and then it disconnects when you hit a set point. But as I said earlier, there's a high point and there is a low set point. It gets very confusing. So terminal three and right four right there would be your heating element, I believe. That's the green. And then over here is your temperature probe one and two. On this particular unit, it is a NTC negative temperature coefficient probe. Now this unit did come with another probe Hold on. Where's the guy? So it did come with a different probe right here. I'm not going to use this because the old one seems to be working just fine. So you can see uh, my meter is going up. It is functioning. It is doing something. Whether or not it shuts off at the point that I want it to, that's a whole different matter. However, if we put this guy carefully back in, like so see that it's close now once it gets to a stable temperature that's when we can calibrate the temperature I basically hook this guy up just to get it to a rough set position because you have to adjust the offset of the existing temperature probe 
which is inside. So the NTC that's embedded inside the cabinet, you have to adjust that to get it close. So now that it knows it's close to the set temperature, we will let it stabilize probably for a half hour to an hour. And as it stabilizes, then we will actually do a temperature calibration. But uh, this is just to get it close and to get it to stabilize somewhere. <laughs> so what was some of the complications I ran into? Well, high set point and low set point. The high set point only goes down to 165 degrees. I do not want to melt this plastic cabinet. As you can see, stuff's falling everywhere. Um, it is supposed to be set at 135. Now the only thing that could get to 135 is to go into the low set point, which means A1, which is one of the settings that you'll scroll into, has to be set to high or low. You, and out, you have to set the relay output state. And for me, I set it on profile two, I believe. And um, then you have to set the hysteresis. Okay, and the hysteresis right here is once you reach that set point, at what level do you want it to kick back on? How many degrees? So basically imagine your temperature like a sine wave. It'll reach the top, it'll shut off. How long do you want it to go into a resting state before it kicks back on? I set it to five degrees, default is 10 degrees. We'll see the lower the, the history system, the more energy it's going to use. And at the same time, the more wear and tear on all the components. So 10 degrees might be close. I set it to five because 135 degrees for a hydrocolator is already kind of a low temperature. So that means it's going to go down to 130. So the history says I have it set at about five degrees close enough, right? So anyway, guys, this has been one heck of a process. And the really satisfying part, as long as it doesn't melt, <laughs> is the fact that it is heating. You can see right here, it knows that it needs to heat. I set it to be, um, let's see, A1, low set point is higher low set point. So um, A1, I have it set to low. And that is because when A1 is set to low, uh, the temperature probe, when it is less than the low set point, the relay de-excites. We're going to find out if that's really supposed to be what it's supposed to be. Um, hopefully at 135, this guy opens up and if it opens up and then it starts to stabilize, I know I have it set correctly. If not, then one of my wires, I'm going to have to move. You see uh, pin five and pin six right there. I will have to move that wire over. As long as this is flashing, it knows that it has to do something. It knows that it's heating. So I'm hoping at 135, this guy stops flashing. This temperature stabilizes <laughs> and I can set my offset for the negative temperature coefficient and we're going to be good. So guys, that has been my journey this morning is trying to interpret horrible instructions. And um, there are no videos online on how to set these temperature modules. Now, mind you, this temperature module, it is um, a pretty standard part. You see these on refrigerators, freezers, you see them on heaters, on thermal cabinets, on incubators. These things are everywhere. And they're so poorly documented on how to reinstall. Most of the time, people will just buy a static OEM part. However, the OEM had an unlimited back order on this and I was able to track down the part that is the uh, TSWB, the original component. Only thing is, is now I have to program it. If we were to get it from the OEM, like I was hoping to do, then I would normally be able to get a pre-programmed unit. You pop it in there, you do your temperature coefficient, um, your hysteresis and all that is all set. You don't have to worry about that. I have to do it manually because the only place I was able to get this component was online from another vendor. It is the correct component. I just have to make sure that all the settings are, are correct. And that means that this guy is going to run for probably the next day um, to make sure that it maintains a stable temperature. Odd, but that is just one of those things that we biomets have to do if you get a non-OEM configured part. Now this is the same part that the OEM uses. It's the exact same part. Some of the programming might be different. Like the hysteresis might be different. I would never know that. The old unit caught fire 
so I could never find that out. And since I was unable to obtain a part from the OEM, this is the only way to get this unit back in service. So, guys, that is the temperature controller. The data sheet is online, plus it's here. And uh, it's a very versatile component. It's just I really wish it was easier to program. Garbage. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit on temperature controllers and the absolute headache it is to program them. However, sometimes that's some of the stuff that we have to do. Thanks for watching, guys.